Greetings and salutations, young true believers. All right, so today I want to talk to you about Stephen Davies, the expression of emotion in music. And this is a really good article, and I, in my estimation, this uh, this particular article um, it really overlaps with a lot of the same concerns that we've been talking about uh, with respect to aesthetic cognitivism. Right? Can art reveal uh, truths about the external world? independently of science right and so the editors of your textbook on page 190 they offer up a a brief summation of what davies is up to in his articles i want to read that before we dive into this so they write quote we readily recognize the standard role of the graphic arts sculpture painting and photography for instance to represent the world through images we take for granted the capacity of literature to convey thoughts and to, conv uh, to express human feelings through words. Should we also assume that music represents and expresses? And if so, would it express in the same way as other art forms? So is it then that we seem to face a conundrum? A piece of music cannot literally feel happiness or sadness, although we often ascribe music in just those terms. And yet, we do assume that music can in some way express emotions. Stephen Davies evaluates alternative theories about how this is possible and defends the interesting idea that the movement of music is experienced in the same way that human movement is indicative of a person's emotional state. Just as happy people move in a fashion that is energetic, fast, and sprightly, so does happy music. And just as sad people move slowly, as if weighed down with care, so does sad music. So... What Davies does in his article, he he rejects a number of theories about the uh, musical, uh, or excuse me, the emotional content of music. So here on, uh, this is page uh, 214 of the text. The first theory he describes is known as the associative theory of music, right? Through being regularly associated with emotionally charged, charged words or events, particular musical ideas become connected with emotions or moods. So if you hear trumpets, right, or drums, particularly snare drums, you might, your thoughts might instantly go to uh, thoughts of war, right? Uh, and Davies acknowledges this, right? He says there's no doubt that music can often invoke former contexts in which it was heard and the emotions with which they were infused. It seems very unlikely, though, that music's expressiveness is always associative in this way. And he notes that uh, there are always alternative sets of circumstances that evoke emotions, right? Uh, as he notes, thoughts of war surely do not always recall a specific set of emotions. For some, they occasion nostalgia and others sadness. The second view that he considers is what's known as the expression theory, and that's the view that if music is sad or happy, this is because it stands to the composer's sadness or joy as an expression of it, right? But Davies objects, uh, look, some of the greatest symphonies, pieces of music ever composed, took years to compose, right? The, the author, or excuse me, the composer set it aside and came back to it after a time, right? So to say that the composer was always in one mood when he or she... Uh, compose that particular piece of music doesn't seem to stand up to scrutiny, right? So the third view that he considers, this is bottom of page 215. Uh, this is um, the emotivist or arousal theory. And it's the view that what makes it true that music is sad, say, is that it moves the hearer to sadness, right? To deal with cases in which conditions are not conducive or the listener is not able to follow music, the theory could be revised to say that the music is sad if it should arouse such feelings in a suitable listener under appropriate conditions. And Davies has, you know, ready criticisms for that view. Even when the auditor and conditions are ideal, the response is not inevitable. The listener might hope to cheer her mood by listening to happy music and fail. And we've always been, we've been there. Everyone uh, has experienced sadness and thought to alleviated by listening to a happy piece of music doesn't necessarily always work so <clears throat> excuse me the fourth view that he considers is by uh two authors we're already familiar with gerald levinson and jennifer robinson 
we have uh, expressing this in music by experience the course of music as a story about events or experiences undergone by a hypothetical persona. That is, we make believe of the unfolding of the music that is an episode in the life of an imaginary person and on that basis judge what emotions that person must undergo. To aid us, the waxing and waning of tensions in the fabric of the music establish the pattern of the events that we imaginatively fill out. So, when you listen to the lyrics of a song, you can imagine either yourself or more commonly just some person, some random person experiencing a situation that is ascribed in the lyrics. Um, Levinson, or excuse me, Davies doesn't like this theory either, strange. Although I think there is something to be said for this uh, this theory. He notes that one objection to this theory uh, observes that many competent listeners who are sensitive to music's expressiveness are not conscious of playing this imaginative charade as they listen. Well, I can only say that uh, I am a, an exception to that rule because I definitely imagine myself in a situation described by the lyrics of, it, of almost any song that I like. Now, if I don't like a particular piece of music, I often, I can't imagine myself in that situation, but I imagine someone else in it. So I think there's something to uh, this, uh, this theory of Levinson and, uh, and, and Robinson's, but <clears throat> Nevertheless, Davies wants to present his own view on the expressiveness of music, and he notes uh, that his theory involves, quote, the movement of music should be ex is experienced in the same way that bodily bearings or comportments indicative of a person's emotional states are. And when music is, music is experienced as like behaviors presenting characteristic appearances of emotion, is experienced as similar to the behaviors not only in its dynamic profile, but also in its expressive profile. So, to sum up, just as happy people move in a fashion that is energetic, fast, and sprightly, so does happy music. And just as sad people move slowly, as if weighed down with great care, so does sad music. So, music has a movement, in other words, on Davy's view, a lot like a happy person if it's a happy piece. It has a movement a lot like a sad person if it's a sad piece. Now, he notes that there are... There are problems with this view, and he readily acknowledges that, right? Some people deny experiencing the resemblances just mentioned, though they recognize the music's uh, expressiveness. Also, this account uh, replaces expression, or excuse me, expressiveness as such with the presentation of expressive appearances. And that seems to be really problematic because uh, it might be doubted that these are as compelling or valuable as music's expressiveness is usually thought to be. So... Just this article is really uh, valuable insofar as it, it provides some philosophical flesh to a uh, a view that we're all very much familiar with, and that we all hold colloquially to some extent that music is an expression of emotion, that music represents emotions. Uh, the extent to which it does this, or the, excuse me, not the extent, but rather the manner in which it does this, is still a bit of a mystery.